today we're talking all about worship rehearsals and I'm going to share with you the five things that your worship rehearsals should include. This is going to cover the relational piece, the spiritual piece, and the musical piece which are all essential in your worship rehearsals. And if you just have these five things, these are the essentials. This is what you need to form a solid worship rehearsal. My name is Spencer Cormany from LeadingWorshipWell.com. It's a worship leading blog where I share with you worship leading tips every single day that are practical that will help you lead worship well. So go to www.LeadingWorshipWell.com if you want to read those blog posts or you can connect with me on Instagram and Facebook at Leading Worship Well. But today we're going to be getting into worship rehearsals and I want to share with you these five things that you should consider including not just consider, but actually include in your worship rehearsals because these are the essential things. And at the end of today, I'm going to share with you a couple sample schedules that you can consider including and utilizing to form the basis of your rehearsal. So I've done the work for you. I'm going to lay it out and I'll get to that at the end of today. But for now, let's head into these five things that you need to include in your worship rehearsal. I want to start off by just heading through these five things, just straight through. I'll talk about them just a little bit, but then I'll go into them a little bit further in a second. So starting off, the first thing that you need is an official starting and ending time. I think a lot of people have the starting time down, right? Like you know that your worship rehearsal is going to start at 6.30 p.m. on Thursday or whenever it is for you, but do you have an official ending time? Not just it starts at 6.30 and it's open to interpretation to whenever it ends, but no, it starts at 6.30 and it ends at 8 or whenever it is for you. You need to have this planned out and I'm going to show you why that's so important. For now, let's head on to number two. The second thing you need is a check-in time. This is the relational piece of your worship rehearsal. This is where you build community with your team and I'm gonna be sharing with you how you can make that happen. And it's not difficult to do, you just have to do a few things to make it happen. The third thing you need is a devotional time. We're not just leading our teams relationally, we're also leading them spiritually. And the devotional time is when that happens. And I know leading a devotional might sound intimidating, it might sound like a lot of work for you, But I'm going to share with you how you can do it where it's not intimidating. I'm going to lay out an exact process of how I do it. And I'm not spending an hour studying the Bible so that I can teach my team. But I'm going to show you the system that I use. And it's worked really well for my team. And it'll work well for yours as well. The fourth thing you need, obviously, is a run-through of the songs. That's sort of the main reason that you're gathering for your worship rehearsals. Uh, This is the musical piece of your worship team gathering. This is where you work on your songs, run through them, and I'm going to show you how that should be done. And then finally, you need prayer. And this isn't a short five-second prayer that you throw up at the end of practice, but this can be an event, and I want to show you how you can make it an event. Let's head into this first thing that you need in your worship rehearsal, and that is the official starting and ending time. I want to show you why that's so important. So you need an official starting and ending time. You need to know when your rehearsal is going to start. Most people have that, but you also need to know when it's going to end. And I just want to start talking by this official starting time for a moment, because what this does is it solves the problem of people not showing up on time. And when I say official, I mean you have to know when your rehearsal is going to start, but then you have to actually start it at that time. So if you say your worship rehearsal is going to start at 6.30, but one or two people haven't showed up yet, and they show up five minutes late, you don't say, oh, Jimmy's not here yet, so let's wait for him to start. No, you say, I'm honoring the people's time who have made the commitment and taken the responsibility of showing up on time, so I'm going to start things on time. And what that does is it reinforces the expectation. You say, I'm sorry you didn't make it here on time, but we've set the expectation that we are starting at this specific time, and we're going to do that whether you're here or not. So you might miss out on the first 
five minutes or however late you are. And over time, people are going to notice, hey, this is the expectation, so I need to make every effort to show up to rehearsal on time. And if they don't, then that's when you have the conversation. But this is the first step to making sure that people show up on time is to have an official starting time. Now, when it comes to the ending time of your rehearsal, it's important because it allows people to understand the commitment that they're making. You're asking them to serve on the worship team, right? Think about if your friend asked you to help them out for something and they needed a ride to somewhere. They didn't tell you where it was. They didn't tell you how far away it was. They just told you that they need a ride somewhere. So you say, sure. And you hop in the car and they're like, okay, this place is actually an hour away. Now compare that to them asking you and they're like, yeah, it's just five minutes down the road, right? There's, You could do either. You might be okay doing an hour, but you'd like to know up front. The same is true for your worship team. You should let your team know what the commitment is. Are they committing to 45 minutes of rehearsal once a week? Or is it two hours? It doesn't matter what the length is. It matters that you communicate clearly what they're committing to. And that's going to help more people uh, join your worship team because it's not uncertain. They know what they're committing to. And it uh, kind of gets rid of a few more problems down the road. But allow people to understand the commitment by setting an official starting and ending time. And then the other thing that these two things do together is it builds trust with your team. If they trust you in the small things, they have a better chance of trusting you in the big things. So one of those small things is just starting and ending on time. If you say you're meeting at 6.30 and starting at 6.30, then start at 6.30. If you say you're ending at 8 o'clock, end by eight o'clock. It's these small things that build trust over time with your team and then they will trust you as their leader because they know that you're going to do what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do it every single time. And then finally, the last thing that it does is it helps you make decisions faster. I recently had a message from somebody on Instagram and they were talking about how their rehearsals were taking a long time because they'd get to a certain point and then they wouldn't really know what to do and they'd have to make a decision and they would just try a million different things. Well, if you have an official ending time and you run into one of these decisions that you have to make and let's say your ending time is at 8 o'clock and it's 7.45 and you know you still have to pray well guess what now you don't have the luxury of running through a million different ideas to find the perfect one which there probably isn't a perfect solution anyways you just need to make a decision but now that you have you know I've only got 15 minutes left Okay, I need to make a decision within the next five or ten minutes because we still have to pray at the end. So it moves your decision making along. So I want to ask you the question, what's your official starting and ending time? Do you have an official starting and ending time? Or do you just have a starting time? And do you even start when you say you're going to start your rehearsals? These are the things that you have to think about. Just write it down. Think, how long does my rehearsal take? What's, what am I asking my team to commit to? It doesn't matter the length. I am going to share with you at the end of this training a uh, sample schedule that you can use. But think about it for yourself. You probably have an average that you do every week anyways. You probably generally start around 6.30 and end at 8. So just write it down and make it official and then plan to stick to it every single week. All right, let's get into the second thing that you need in your worship rehearsals. That is a check-in time. So this is, like I said, the relational aspect of your team. This is when your team gets to know each other. And it's okay to just have five, ten minutes to just hang out. It doesn't have to be work the whole time in your worship rehearsal because this is the time where you build community in your team. And you don't even have to have something elaborate planned out. I want to share with you here a few questions that you could ask to just get the conversation moving. So here are a few questions that you could ask. Super simple, gets the conversation going. First, did, you, did anything exciting happen this week? 
somebody in your team probably had something exciting or moderately exciting happen in their week that they want to share. Maybe it was at work or at school or in their family life. And when they share that, you get to know them better. So just a simple question and you can go around in a circle and ask, did anything exciting happen this week? And people will share and then you'll get to know each other better. A different way to sort of ask that question is, what was the best part of your week? Because everybody had a high of the week and a low of the week. So you just got to talk through those things and allow people to share that. It doesn't matter if it was the greatest thing in the world, but at some point, the best part of the week happen. So another question you can ask, or you can just ask sort of icebreaker questions. Like if you had to teach a class on one subject, what would it be about? Just sort of fun questions like that, where you get to know a little bit more about somebody. Maybe they'd share with you a skill that you didn't know that they had. You can ask these sort of questions to get the conversation going. And then one last thing about the check-in time is I recommend doing this in a different space than your song run-through. I like to utilize a bunch of different spaces around church in our worship rehearsal because I find that it makes it... Uh, like you're not just stagnant in one space. I think a lot of worship teams just head up to the stage and they do everything there. And that's fine, but we've got, you know, space in the back of our worship space. We've got a welcome center that we can utilize and then we've have the stage. So if you break these different elements that you need in your worship rehearsal up and have them in different areas, it makes your worship rehearsal just feel a little bit fresher where you're not just staying in the same room in the same place the entire time. So think about what are some different spaces that you could utilize in your church for these different elements. So that was the check-in time. The next thing you need is a devotional. And just like that check-in time was the relational aspect of your team, this is your spiritual aspect of your team. You are called to lead your team not just relationally, but also spiritually. And the devotional is the perfect time to do this. Now, I want to make it very clear that this is not just a random Bible study. You don't just open your Bible up to some random passage and talk about it. First of all, in my team, the expectation is that they are a part of our Bible studies that we already have as an entire church throughout the week. So they're already being spiritually fed. And I want to be very careful whenever I teach them to not tell them like a bunch of different things. You know, think about it. On Sunday, maybe your pastor's teaching something. And then on Wednesday, which is when we have our small group Bible studies, Maybe they're learning something else. I don't want to introduce a third topic in there because then they're being pulled in a million different directions. What I want to do is speak directly to them as the worship team. This is the one time in the week that you have to speak directly to your worship team. So make it directly apply to them and the fact that they're on the worship team. This devotional time is the perfect time to communicate vision to your team right? You're not talking to people who aren't in the worship team. You're just talking to your team. So make it specific to them, not just a random Bible study. And when it comes to the format of it, I love to use this motto, don't just tell them, but involve them in the conversation, All right, You don't have to be the one who comes up with 95% of the content for your devotional. If you have a few well-placed questions that you ask your team, you can allow them in the moment to create the content that's being taught, and then you just sort of facilitate the conversation and move it in the direction that you ultimately want it to go. So a few questions that you could ask is something like, what journey are the songs we're leading taking us on? which means every time you're going through a set list on a Sunday and you're leading worship, you're going on a journey. You are leading your church from point A to point B. So if you get your team to start thinking about, okay, what is the journey we're going on? That's a way to lead them spiritually because now they're engaged and they're not just thinking, hey, we're playing uh, four or five songs this Sunday, but how do all of these songs work together and what are the spiritual truths that are being highlighted in them? So that's one example of a question you could ask. You could also ask something like, what's a piece of advice you'd give somebody if they joined the worship team? 
and this gets them to think about their own experience like what have I learned in my time on the worship team so they're reflecting on their own learning process but then you're asking them to take it a step further where they're actually sharing it with the other people on the team and everybody's learning from each other and you didn't have to spend half an hour 45 minutes coming up with anything you just simply came up with a question which probably took five minutes and now they're creating the content and the lesson within the devotional just sort of a another way to think about doing a devotional and then also you, know, you can use this time for other things whatever you want to do in that devotional time this is the time to do it maybe it's running through a new song and at the beginning maybe you talk about what the song means and that's part of the devotional and then this is like a new song to your team so you take a moment to run through the song or you could listen to recordings with your team as well this is this could also be i talked about this is part of the spiritual aspect of leading your team but this could also be part of the uh, musical too which the musical aspect where you're teaching them how to play together so you listen to recordings and ask them what could we do better or hey i noticed this i want you to listen to this part in this specific song and we're going to work on that tonight or you could do a special prayer focus maybe you have something specific going on in your church that you need to pray for and it's not like i'm going to pray for this for five seconds but we're going to take 10 minutes 15 minutes i don't know whatever's comfortable for your team and we're going to sit here and we're going to pray for this specific thing right a devotional is not just a random bible study there's tons of creativity that you can incorporate into it i gave you a bunch of ideas and you can use those in your worship rehearsal so let's move on to the next one which is the run through which is what most people do at their worship rehearsal you run through your songs but I want to challenge you to not just go through your songs song by song by song, but I want you to start thinking about it of running through your songs just like you would on a Sunday. I know I've been part of worship rehearsals before where we have five songs to do on Sunday. So we play through the first song and then we stop and maybe we talk for a little bit and everybody turns their music page if you're using music and then you head into the second song and you stop and then you go on to the next song i want you to not think about worship rehearsal that way i want you to think about it like it is a dress rehearsal for sunday so you're running from song to song to song just like you would on a sunday you don't stop in between because those in between moments are really important you've got to figure out those transitions and the only way to do it is to actually do it song one transition into song two without stopping from song to song so you need to be practicing your transitions and there may be times where you need to stop and work on a specific section that's okay if like you notice your band's not together in the bridge going into the last chorus or whatever you might need to stop for a moment and say hey let's work on this part but then after that don't just stop and move on to the next song no run through the ending again and then head into the next song just like you would on the sunday that's what your run through should look like and then finally the last thing you need is prayer and i want to challenge you to make this an event not just something you do at the end of rehearsal i know some worship teams like you run through your song and at the end of rehearsal you just circle up on stage and the worship leader prays for a minute or whatever and then you're like okay good rehearsal everybody let's go home i want you to think about making this an event and one of the ways that you can do that is to walk through your worship space as you pray that's one of the things i've loved doing with my team over the past year and a half is we actually go out to where the congregation is going to be sitting on sunday and we walk through the chairs and we pray over them because whenever like you know people have like a specific spot where they sit on sunday you get that in your mind and then as you're walking through the chairs you think about hey this person sits here on sunday i want to pray specifically for them so it helps you sort of formulate your prayer as you go through it and you know who you're praying for and you can visualize it in your head too and pray specifically for people instead of just like a general prayer for the whole gathering and then at the end of that what 
my team does is we meet back in a specific part of our worship space. We have a, a uh, cross at the back of our sanctuary, and we just all meet there. But I'm not the only one praying. I don't lead the closing prayer. We don't just gather and I pray over things and it's done. I like to have different team members lead the closing prayer because the thing is everybody on the team is a worship leader. And what it does is whenever you ask them to pray in that sort of smaller environment of your team of, I don't know, five or six or seven or however big your team is, it builds their confidence. Because you probably have somebody on your team who maybe doesn't feel comfortable talking or praying whenever you're actually leading worship on a Sunday. So this creates sort of a safe space where they can practice praying, and it's not as intimidating as being in front of the whole church and praying. So it builds confidence, but then the other thing it does is it shows your team that they all have the responsibility of praying. It's not just your responsibility as the leader of the team to pray. This is something that's the responsibility of everybody on your team and everybody in your church. Everybody is responsible for praying. So whenever you have different people pray, and it's not just you all the time, you are communicating that truth to your team and leading them in that way. So those were the five things. I actually have one more bonus thing here, and this is really important. You need margin in your schedule. You need to have some empty space because, as you know, things aren't always going to go as planned, right? Things are going to mess up sometimes. Sometimes the sound system isn't going to work. Sometimes you're going to have to work extra long on a specific part of the song. So if you want to stick to that official starting time and official ending time, then you need to have margin built in there. So if something goes wrong, you're not stretching that official ending time out even further. So you build margin into the schedule that you already have. And that way, maybe you end a little bit earlier because you didn't need the margin, or maybe you needed all of that margin time and it took you right to the very end of your official ending time. So think about that. Think about where you can add margin into your schedule. And I want to share with you now a sample rehearsal schedule. I'm going to show you a video here. It's a, from an Instagram story that I put up a few months ago. This is how my worship team used to have our rehearsals set up. We've since changed it a little bit, but I just wanted to share with you this one in case this works in your environment and then I'll show you our updated schedule that you can consider using as well. So just enjoy this video for the next couple minutes. I'm going to walk you through a sample rehearsal schedule. It's Thursday, which means it's worship rehearsal tonight at my church and probably a lot of your churches as well. And last Thursday, I posted that it was worship rehearsal, and I got some DMs asking me what that looked like for my team. So I want to show you what a worship rehearsal looks like. We start worship rehearsals at 6 p.m., and we start out here. This is actually our welcome center. And uh, we meet out here on the couches and run through a couple songs acoustically. And we do that for two reasons. First of all, most of our instruments are acoustic, so it just makes sense. But on top of that, whenever we're out here on these couches, we get to play in a circle environment, which means that we get to lock in a little bit better because we're looking at each other whenever we're playing. And then the second reason we meet out here is because it just gives us another chance to kind of test out parts that we want to incorporate, really just like break songs down before we do a full rehearsal on stage. After that, we just have some community time where we just check in with each other, see how everyone's doing. That lasts like 15, 20 minutes, and in that time is also a devotional where I ask a question and get some people's opinions on it. Next part's important because from there we pray and then we transition onto stage. And I'm super intentional about making that happen at 6.45 because I know that that's going to set us up to end our rehearsals on time. From there we head up on stage and we do a complete run through. We run through all the songs just like we would on a Sunday morning from start to finish, no stopping in between. To end our night, we spend the last 15 minutes or so praying, and what that looks like is walking through all of these chairs, praying for people who are going to be there on Sunday, and then we wrap up praying together at the cross right here. So that's what our worship rehearsals look like. Maybe that doesn't make sense for you to do in your church, but the important thing is that you can take out of this is that we start and stop our rehearsals on time. We start at 6, we end at 7.45.
All right, sorry about that. Got my mic unmuted now. So I hope you can see all of those elements that were in there. I'm now going to show you that that was the way that we used to do our worship rehearsal. Now I want to show you a sort of a text based instead of a video sample schedule of how we currently do our worship rehearsals at my church. And you can consider using this because it's got all of the essential ingredients of a good worship rehearsal that we just talked about. So here's what we currently do at my church for a rehearsal. You see the official starting and ending time. We start at 6.30, and it doesn't matter if everyone's there <clears throat> or if, you know, three people out of five people are there. Most of our team shows up right on time, so that's not a problem for us because I've started at 6.30 for the past year right on the dot, so people know that they need to be there at that time. So we've got an official starting time. I have the ending time written down on the schedule too. You can see that we end at 7.45. So our rehearsals are about an hour and 15 minutes long. That's what works for us. Consider what works for you. How much time do you need? But we start things off with a check-in slash devotional time. And I put those two things together because they really flow one into the other. We start off with a check-in time where we're just asking those questions that we talked about. What was the best part of your week? Maybe sort of an icebreaker question, just building that community and that relational aspect for our worship team. And then from that, I head into the devotional where I say, hey, this is what we want to talk about tonight. This is what we want to learn. And I ask a question to get people involved in the conversation. From there, and by the way, that, that doesn't take a long time. You see, I only have 15 minutes uh, set up for that. So check-in time is like five minutes. Devotional time is like 10 minutes tops. And then we're going to our run-through, and we pray in between there too before we head up on stage to do our run-through. So at 645, we do our run-through. And we're running through the songs just like we would on a Sunday morning. No stopping in between. We want to practice those transitions. And you can see there that I've got, what, 45 minutes planned for the run-through? That might sound like a lot of time for you. Personally, at my church, we do six songs on Sunday. So if each song is like roughly five minutes long, it's 30 minutes to run through each song one time which means I have 15 extra minutes in there, which is where that margin is built in that we talked about before. So if maybe the devotional and the check-in time went a little bit long, now we have 15 minutes to play with, or maybe uh, the run-through is taking a little bit longer than normal. There's a difficult section in a song, and we need a little bit more time to work on it. I've built that margin in right there because it doesn't take us 45 minutes to run through six songs straight through. It only takes a half an hour. So we've got 15 minutes of margin built in. And then after that, at 7.30, we pray. And I've got 15 minutes there reserved for prayer. Maybe that sounds like a lot for you, but I want to remind you again that this is an event for us. It's not just me praying on stage to wrap things up like a two or three minute prayer. No, this is an event where we're walking out throughout the worship space, praying over the chairs and the people who are going to be sitting in those chairs on Sunday. So make it an event. And then we gather back at the cross in the back of our sanctuary and we pray there and close things up with other team members, not just me praying the whole time, but everybody on our team is asked to pray at some point to build that confidence and to show them that they are a worship leader and they have the responsibility of praying as well. And then finally at 745, we wrap things up and that's the end. So there are some sample worship rehearsal schedules that you can consider using before you go. I want to show you one more thing. I put together this free audio training for you. All you have to do to get it is head to the link in the description. You'll see it down there, or you can just head to www.leadingworshipwell.com, but it's an audio training called Five Tips to Instantly Improve Your Worship Leading. And in that training, I walk you through five simple tips. These aren't hard things to do. You just have to simply be aware of them. And if you make the conscious decision to implement them into your worship leading, it will improve your worship leading because these are things that you really should be doing. So head over to leadingworshipwell.com to find that or just click the link in the description. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'll catch you next time.